to Around the Campfire with AmeriCamp, the Ultimate Summer Camp podcast. Today we have the absolute honour of um, speaking with Molly, the Executive Director of Scope, and we also have um, Shari from our US team joining us today. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Scope and AmeriCamp collaboration, um, learn a little bit more about the work that Scope does out in the US and kind of how AmeriCamp has been getting involved with it, um, and kind of just talk about our sort of personal stories with the impact that Scope can have on camp so hopefully this will be a really good opportunity for our listeners to like learn a little bit more about scope but also hopefully get involved with the fundraising efforts that we have coming up in the very near future but yeah i thought maybe we could just introduce ourselves we can kind of go around um us three kind of give a little bit of the details about who we are our involvement in everything i've been on the podcast multiple times but my name is julia i'm an applications coordinator for americamp i went to camp three summers and i'm kind of helping organize this whole scope event um but if we'd like to introduce ourselves maybe molly if you want to go first kind of give a little bit of detail about your role with Scope and everything. Yeah, hi. I'm um, so happy to be here with you and, and really so appreciative of AmeriCamp's support for Scope and um, really taking this step and in, in getting even more involved with our, us and our work. Um, I am Molly Hot Gallagher. I am the Executive Director of Scope. I have been in this position for almost 10 years now, but a volunteer with Scope for a long, long time. Our work is is really revolved around making camp accessible for all children. Mm -hmm. And so really breaking those financial barriers for families and uh, covering the campership cost for the experience of overnight summer camp for children from low-income families and under-resourced communities to go to overnight camp. I got into this work because camp really changed my life, benefited me as a kid. And I was really, really fortunate that my parents had the means to send me to camp. Mm -hmm. Uh, It wasn't necessarily a choice that I had. Mm -hmm. They just put me on the bus and sent me away for eight weeks. I really feel the gratitude for them for doing that. Um, I was at camp as a camper counselor all the way up in the leadership um, for 15 years and paved a way to make this a part of my career path uh, is now giving the gift of camp to those who otherwise could not afford it. So I'm really grateful to be here and um, excited about this partnership. Oh, thank you so much, Molly. I, I'm really like, it's so nice to hear about like your camp experience and how impactful it is and how that's led you to then help others because I feel like that's exactly what our applicants are gonna be doing, um, like our alumni and everything. So my name is Sherry Day. I've been with AmeriCamp three years. I'm the director of camp development over on the US side. And like Molly, I started off as a camper. I was an assistant camp director, a camp director. And then decades later, I had this amazing opportunity to join AmeriCamp, supporting our camp counselors from the UK and around the globe to come over and experience camp. Um, What makes Scope really unique and this partnership so unique for me is that my parents could not afford the camp experience. And it was only through scholarships and philanthropy that I myself had the opportunity and the path that has led me here today and all of the um, amazing skills and who I am with the the roots of camp. So when I think of Scope and I think of AmeriCamp's partnership with Scope, it's really the heart of bringing camp counselors here Mm -hmm. is supporting the camper and the camperships and this collaboration just makes sense on so many levels. And then it really brings together this international piece of global education. We're not only providing our international camp counselors with the experience of the US, but we are bringing the world to our campers. Right. And so that's just at the root of of all of this collaboration and what's led us here today. When I was sort of doing my like looking into scope and reading, I read like the whole website. I'm just so like absolutely fascinated by everything that you do. It's just so wonderful. I was reading a lot of stories about campers that had said, you know, I learned how to, um, you know, ride a canoe from someone from Australia. I learned how to be a good friend from someone from England. I learned how to shoot a basketball from someone from South Africa. Like that's exactly what that international aspect of camp brings. And that's, that's brilliant. I know we've kind of already touched on like what scope does. We've kind of brushed over it maybe a little bit, but do we want to maybe have Molly talk a little bit about what scope does as an organization and kind of what the general like mission of scope is just a general. I I mean, I'm thrilled to, Um, (laughs) especially based based on this, this growing partnership. I think it's really valuable for, for people to understand sort of what the efforts and support 
are doing yeah. and how many lives are being changed because of it. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm grateful to share. <laughs> so, so SCOPE stands for Summer Camp Opportunities Promote Education. We were founded over 30 plus years ago on the basis of wanting to make equal camp experiences possible for children whose families otherwise could not afford it. And that mission has lasted and continued those 30 plus years and developed even further um, into helping the whole child in their educational journey. So now we are in this process of really from camp to college to beyond. And so um, our goal as an organization is serve as many children as possible with overnight summer camp experiences. Uh, we do so by partnering with nonprofit American Camp Association accredited overnight camps throughout the United States uh, in order to provide children with that access to one or two week camp experiences in those overnight camps. Mm -hmm. So we're not operating a camp ourselves. We are not, uh, you know, touting that we are the best camp out there because we are not a camp at all, right? We are relying so deeply on these partner relationships and so many of the partner relationships that we have are your AmeriCamp partners, right? You are providing the staff that make these experiences possible and, and successful for the kids that we are getting to camp. Um, so this is like a real wonderful synergy of bringing all of these people into the same place, same space, and giving them this access, not only to build relationships with one another, but um, to have life, positively life-changing experience at camp. The surrounding elements of our work and when it comes to the promote education are also about the commitment that the young people are making when they start at camp from age seven or eight. Um, they have the ability to return to camp with scope support for um, up until they're, they're 16 years old. So we're supporting children from seven to 16 uh, with that financial access. And in doing so, um, if they attend their scope supported camp at that partner camp for six or more years here in the East Coast, and we're sort of branching this out, they're also eligible to apply for college scholarship support. Mm -hmm. So uh, not only do we have 1,300 children at camp this summer with scope support at 67 different nonprofit uh, partner camps, we also now have 29 young people who are in college and in some version of a college program, whether that's two-year school, four-year school, vocational, uh, you know, certificate program. The goal of this for us is really helping children succeed and sort of come out of the situation that they were born into, which not that's not choice, right? That's <laughs> born into, and help them see a way out um, and, a, and a, a path to a, a better direction in their own lives. So. That is sort of the gist of the work that we're doing. <laughs> that was, you explained it so beautifully. And well, we had a little bit of a, um, I put a little bit of a presentation on for our team in the office to kind of have, we had a little bit of a lunch and learn to kind of learn a little bit more about scope. And that was kind of the thing that was identified as, as um, the part that they didn't really know about, but was the most astonishing and most impressive was the educational aspect and kind of the longevity of it because it doesn't stop at one summer it's it's years and years of support is just so wonderful and I think that from a personal you know side but also from the feedback that we get from our applicants and alumni one of the big things that stands out to them is the maturity level of the kids that they're working with is so different um, to those who maybe didn't don't get the opportunity to go to camp so I think mm. that the self-sufficiency the confidence that they're building like during that period is just so valuable um, yeah. so yeah it's really really lovely to hear um, and on a sort of like more like personal note, what would you say is like the aspect of Scope's impact that you're like most proud of? There's a lot, honestly. Yeah, um, you know, in the close to 20 years of involvement with this organization, obviously I've seen a lot of growth. Some of half of that was in volunteerism, and the other half is now as as the ED. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the growth, the numbers. Is, is a huge impact, right? Like I, I just mentioned 1,300 kids went to camp this summer. Well, 1,000 went to camp last summer and 900 the summer before. So, you know, to see that growth is obviously something I feel very proud of, mm -hmm. proud of my team about, proud of our board about, right? Like all, and all of the elements of all of the supporters who are, are part of the process of making that happen. What I feel greatest about right now is the diversity of the camps that we partner with. Mm -hmm. um, Right, like a big thing that sets scope apart, sets us is different about the work that we do, is because we are not a camp, we have the ability to partner with as many different camps that are out there serving children who are looking for different types of programs, different have different needs, right? Mm -hmm. And so 
our goal as an organization is to serve all children. And what that means is really finding programs that fit everybody's needs. So whether a child is looking for an arts program or they're looking for an LGBTQ plus program, or they're looking for a program that's geared towards agricultural farming or sea camp or right. Like our, our true effort here is make sure that there is something out there for them Mm -hmm. and then be able to fund it so they can go and they can go again. And then, so I think that, you know, with having partnered with 67 camps this summer, last summer, we partnered with 56. So there's a, a significant growth, not only in the number of children that we're serving, but in the amount of camps that we are able to partner with. And I hope, right, like as we kind of started this conversation offline, like that there are more and more nonprofit ACA accredited camps out there throughout the U.S. that maybe don't know about SCOPE or maybe don't know that they're eligible to apply for SCOPE support mm-hmm. and that we can really start to build those relationships because the more funds that we raise, the more kids we can provide with camp, but we also want to make sure that they're finding the right camps that, that are a fit for them and that, that the camps are a fit for that family as well. Absolutely. I'm sure we have so many applicants that have been to those 67 camps. So it'd be really interesting to like have them contribute and hear from them and everything. But um, yeah, that's so wonderful. And I was wondering from Shari, like, how did this collaboration, I know you mentioned previously that, you know, um, this was something that meant a lot to you from kind of your past experience with camp. How did that collaboration between AmeriCamp and Scope come about? How did you kind of harness that? Um, well, I would just say that when I first started AmeriCamp, we had an opportunity to go to one of the benefits that Scope was having to raise funds. And um, I really went blindly the first time. I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to this room. There's a lot of camps. We're raising money. And then I sat in the room and I started hearing the stories, not just from the camps or from Scope, but recipients who got up and talked about how their lives were changed. Family members who got up and talked about what a difference this experience made for their children. And it you just have a moment where like, how do you not, Mm. how do you not want to make a difference and be part of this? And then as I mentioned before, right, it's so hand in hand with what we do and what our mission is. Mm -hmm. Molly talked about finding the right camp for the right recipient to have them grow as individuals. Isn't that so much of what we do for our camp counselors is bring them on board and say, what is your right camp? How are you going to grow at the end of these six weeks or eight weeks or 10 weeks and go home to your country and have a new perspective on life? Mm -hmm. And so for me, it just was so much of a shared collaboration in what we're trying to accomplish in a bigger sense of the global world and the young people that we work with. You put it so well, Shari, and something that we are really trying to do in office is, um, you know, break down stereotypes of what camp is. You know, that's part of the reason that we do this podcast. That's everything that we, you know, put into our calls with our applicants, our discussions with them, our camp fairs, is helping them understand the diversity that exists in summer camps in the US. It's not just what you're seeing on social media. There is so many levels, like, so many different types of camps that have so many different types of offerings and everyone is going to find that match for them that it just fits um so well so yeah absolutely that kind of connection between us and scope it's really nice to see that we've got that mission um uh in common essentially we already kind of spoke about like uh scope's impact and why it's important to us i think on our side of things the when you presented to us Um, or we're going to be partnering with Scope. We also felt that that was so important. Um, We, as an AmeriCamp team on the UK side, have all taken part in the Camp Counselor program. We've all been to different types of camps across the years. Um, We've all had different experiences with camp, but we've all been able to see the transformative experience that camp is for the children that we work with. So on a personal level, you know, I went to camp my first summer in 2018 and the children that I worked with were sort of like the 12 and 13 year old girls. And, you know, they wouldn't necessarily have been on the scope program, but just being there for one week, two weeks, three weeks, however long it was, you see such immense change in them from day one to the last day. And it was something that I wasn't necessarily expecting going into camp. Um, You know, 
I think you envision it as being like, oh, we're just going to have some fun. Like, it'll just be this activity and that activity. But you're developing confidence. You're building community. You know, you're making, like, lifelong friendships. These kids will tell me they've been pen pals all year and they can't wait to get back to camp. They're living 10 months for two. Um, and that is just, you know, something that they will carry with them forever. And I think that the way that I've seen that is through my like fellow camp counselor friends. So people that I've worked alongside who were campers their whole life, you know, I have friends who have, are getting their like 10 year beads from camp, 11 year, 12 year, 13 year, like they've been going for a lifetime and they don't even remember life without it. And they are some of the most well-rounded, wonderful, accomplished people that I've met in my life going on to do incredible things and giving the opportunity to children who wouldn't get it otherwise who are you know disadvantaged in maybe a socioeconomic way that same ability to like develop into these like wonderfully accomplished well-rounded people um it's just like so invaluable i can't imagine anything better basically <laughs> i wanted to mention from a personal side of things how excited i am to be working um with scope as well moving into kind of like our side of things and like what we're going to be doing i don't know molly if you wanted to touch on kind of how you know aside from our event that we've got coming up which we'll mention in a moment how um individuals um maybe from the uk who are listening or other sort of participants in the program can contribute to scope and their mission first of all what you just said was so beautiful in in the relationship right yes. like so yes. much of what camp is for young people for staff right it's about the relationships that you build is about the community that you become a part of about how that supportive aspect of camp exists with you whether you're there or you're not yeah and i think that for any staff member who's coming into this experience for the first time or for the 10th time right no whether you're going back to the same camp you worked at before you're you're going somewhere new to try a different position or a different type of program there is a community there that you are going to be a become a part of that is going to be a lasting part of your life mm -hmm. that happens for the children at camp for sure but i think for young adults and and, and adults who continue to, to go back to camp right this this is becomes ingrained in the decisions you make in your life right how you treat people what what your experiences are like in other work environments it's so transferable every single thing that you do at camp really plays forward in, in all aspects of life. And I, I do think if, if there is a, a moment where you're saying, well, this is, it's camp. I don't know that this is going to help me in my future. It, it really does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's things that I learned when I was eight years old in my first summer of camp that still play forward in my life today. One of which is making my bed every day, right? Like <laughs> there is some element of that, that like I didn't, as a child, I didn't have to do that at home. But when I came back from camp, I sure did. And now in my life as a, an adult, right? It's I, every morning I make my bed, I think about camp. And that is a, an independent kind of skill that I could have been taught at home, but I wasn't. Yeah. That I learned at camp and I continue to play forward and feel grateful that I learned at camp. And, and I'm reminded literally every day that that was something that came to me from that experience. So I think that something as little as that can actually change somebody's way of being and way of doing. Um, yeah, not at, at all what you just asked, but That's I, okay. I, I don't worry. <laughs> that was one. Well, I was just gonna sorry jump in and say that you know obviously you've got the the little things that is like so so true, and I saw that happen with my kids as well. But I think there's something that like applicants of the program may not expect is that every camp has its own like individual values. Um, so at my camp, for example, and a lot of YMCA camps, it's all about respect, responsibility, honesty, and caring. And you may think, oh, you might mention it once, but it's mentioned every day, all day. We are harnessing respect, responsibility, honesty, and caring. I don't think I have ever been in an environment that really emphasize values as heavily as camp does and i now truly bring those values into every single day and i can recognize in myself if i'm not taking responsibility in relationships if i'm not being honest with people and again like that is just something that is fully ingrained so it's all the way from the smaller you know well 
you could call it small, but actually it's massive to be able to make your own bed and everything. You've got your daily task all the way up to like essential values that make you like such a wonderful person. So yeah, kind of both ends of the spectrum and all the way between. And finality, right? Yes, exactly, of- yeah. Thinking about my mom hat, I have two children who both are at camp. One's at day camp, one is at overnight camp. And my son who's at overnight camp comes home and there's an intentionality about what he was taught. And for him, it was never going to be about making beds, learning to have a voice, learning to make friends and be outside his comfort zone because he couldn't go home. He was waking up every day in a room full of 10 strangers And it was up to him and his staff and his camp to teach him the skills to have a voice to learn how to be with new people, new personalities. And that is a skill that any of us can use and take with us our whole entire lives. One of our staff here at Scope, and we're a very small team, it's four of us, and one of our staff um, benefited from camp not through scope, but would have, you know, would have uh, had that eligibility if scope was around at the time. Um, And she was given the opportunity to go to sleepaway camp. And she says the thing, and to to this day, it's resiliency, Mm. right? There's the element of resiliency that you learn at camp that you don't experience anywhere else. And, and I think for the, the 10 plus years that I've, I've known her, that plays forward for me in all of the work that we do, right? Is learning and building resiliency in your own life is a skill that you you need yeah. you, you need in this world and uh, it's so valuable and and i mean it's i don't know any other part of life where i probably could have learned resiliency in, in a similar way I yeah don't. i think often when you are learning resiliency it's it's within hardship but you're learning resiliency at camp in like a safe nurturing environment you're almost like then associating resiliency as like a good thing rather than like oh I just have to persist through bad things like you can also like persist through the good to get more out of it like you're using resiliency to make more friends you're using it to learn new skills like it's just all positive which is great so uh, you know the the question you asked was around um how people can be involved or what could they be doing or how how they could sort of take their own life and jump into working and partnering with scope right Mm -hmm. um so so much of the work that we do is all volunteer based. Mm -hmm. And so we have young people, I would say age seven to 18, who say, I wanna get involved, what can I do, right? And so we have individuals who are stepping up at such a young age because they're benefiting from camp, they wanna help pay it forward. And so they'll take on, whether it's fundraising, you know, in their own space and creating something fun and, and interactive for the people in their lives, mm-hmm. or they're creating some sort of awareness raiser. Mm-hmm. So we have young people who will do packing projects and get, you know, friends to help collect all the supplies that campers need at camp and make those backpacks so that they can be donated to the camp so that kids, when they get to camp, have their own fresh new towel. They have clean socks that are brand new. They have some of the elements, like toothbrushes, hairbrushes, combs, like all of the things that we take for granted in such simplicity, yeah. but really are still very valuable and needed for the kids that we're serving. Um, and then we have people, and we, we say sort of the, the college age, right, who are involved <laughs> in so many different things in their lives, but also then wanting to pay it forward, who bring together groups of people and do the same types of things, events and fundraisers um, or awareness raisers in their lives. And then we have what well, so our younger group here is called the Junior Leadership Council. That's our really our 18 and under. Um, we have youth projects, that kind of element. And then we have our 21 and ups, which we call our associate board. And those are young professionals. We, they're camp passionate young professionals who work in any field, mm-hmm. uh, who understand the benefits of camp and want to help make, make it possible for others, pay it forward. Um, they meet in person, they meet virtually. And um, this can be taking place anywhere in the world to be part of this Mm -hmm. and helping to not only echo out our messaging to those who don't necessarily know about scope um but also to to bring those together uh for the common ground of giving the gift of camp oh it's so like it's so lovely that there's such a massive community around it and obviously when we go to camp we meet so many people that are super passionate about it so hopefully listening to this maybe some more people will want to get involved but just to kind of like 
finish off talking about like our kind of efforts in, in terms of AmeriCamp and what we're going to be doing. Um, Shara, did you want to sort of talk a little bit about how this sort of um, global 5K has come about and what the plan is for it um, for the people that are listening that might want to get involved? So um, using Molly's own words, um, <laughs> we want to pay it forward, right? Our camp counselors, our team, our alumni have all had the experience of camp. And so for us, partnering with Scope and hosting this 5K is our way to pay it forward to the camps and the campers that uh, made a difference in our life and what we do. And so we thought what an amazing way to bring our global community together was to do a fundraiser around a 5K um, there in the UK. I'm so excited that you're going to be doing an in-person live event on September 27th. Uh, but then there's so many of us in the U.S., in South Africa, in Spain, who also want to participate. And so even if you're in the U.K. and can't get to Manchester, um, we're going to be having a global walk or run. There's no reason for it to be a 5K run. Any timetable will do. Uh, but it's our way to pay it forward, to give it back, to raise funds while doing a community event, right? Yeah. Taking that camp idea of community and coming together together um for a purpose and so that is sort of where where it started and what it led us here today i was just thinking about like all of the international staff that not only were my counselors when i was a camper but also i had the opportunity to work with when i was a young adult what i always loved or sort of like lived in my head vicariously through because social media <laughs> didn't exist at the time was that they got to travel after camp, right? That yes. they would would take the opportunity while they were in the States to go and, and be a part of the country that they were spending their summer in. Right. And so I also, I, I just thought about this and, and sharing all of our conversation. I didn't think about this before, but even those wonderful staff members who finished their summer, who are still in the U S can participate in this, global day right like yeah. if they're you know out in, in california if they're in new york city right this this can be happening anywhere in the whole mm -hmm. world all at once bringing once again a community together because you want to pay it forward and i think that that's just so incredibly cool and we are so beyond grateful that this is happening that this idea came about and that we could be part of it like the the number one thing that I hear from our applicants when they do touch back in the UK is what can I do to keep the camp magic going? Like I, mm. I, I I'm having like a camp magic deficiency. I need to do so. That's what you know. That's how we get our brand ambassadors. That's how we get our influencers. Um, that's why we have so many returners that go back year on year. But this is such a fun easy way to get that camp magic back have that community feeling while also giving back to potentially campers that you had this summer in your cabin who wouldn't have had that opportunity otherwise um which is so much fun and like you said shari obviously we've got our manchester event and there is a little bit of buzz in the office um about it like i said we had a little bit of a little lunch and learn chatting about it which is really fun we all kind of learned about scope and i think everyone who even the people in the office who haven't done camp who are from different you know programs or whatever are still super excited about it so um yeah we've got our manchester run which is going to be happening in a park um about 10, 15 minutes away from the office. And um, we're all sort of like getting sponsored by friends and family. And, you know, especially those of us who have been to camp, our colleagues who also were our camp counselors, um, you know, at my camp, we call them our beacon lights, the people that like showed us the way. Um, so yeah, it's really exciting. We also have, you know, several people already from across the UK who have potentially just flown back from camp, who have signed up to do those runs and walks in their own location. So I'm really excited to see where people do them, what their route looks like and kind of how much money they're able to raise again from family, friends, people who went to camp with them. Um, it's going to be really exciting. I was going to throw in a shameless plug. Go on. <laughs> I think although, you know, we want our camp counselors to participate, we want our alumni and our um, in-house team Sign up your friends and family. My 11-year-old is raising money, albeit from neighbors and grandparents, but he is excited. You know, he's like, if I can get $5, mom, from each person who signs up. And then he's coming home from school, he's having his snack, and he's putting on his sneakers. This yeah. doesn't have to be an individual activity. Yeah. Get your friends involved. If you're a parent, get your kids involved. 
If you're a kid, get your mom involved, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is a, when we talk about community, it's, it's not just our camp community, but the community that we touch at home, yeah. that's part of what we do. Everyone who comes back from camp, you know, as much as their friends and family are going to be like, you're talking a lot about camp, but my friend said you need a camp jar where you put a pound in every time you talk about it. They still appreciate hearing the stories, learning what you've learned and getting involved. And I think in the office, obviously we're doing it together. The fun part is kind of us having little chats about, okay, are you going to walk it? Are you going to run it? What's, what's everyone doing? What cake are you going to get at the coffee shop afterwards? How, who's fundraising for you? It's just a nice little thing to kind of connect us all, which is really nice. During the summer, I get this wonderful opportunity to leave an office space and go out and visit camp, right? Mm -hmm. And I visit the, the partner camps where we're providing camperships for kids to go, and I'm going to supporter camps. So, so many of the for-profit camps that are out there raising awareness and raising funds and doing similar things like a five k during the summer or a color run or a mud run or swimathon whatever it is at their camp and getting a chance to talk to their camp community about our work and empowering them to all get involved and i always use that model just as you should, said sherry like ten dollars right you ask you think about 10 people you know in your life that are not in this room not around you right now and you ask them for ten dollars or in, in this case juliet 10 pounds right <laughs> and you say okay if you can each person can raise a hundred dollars or a hundred pounds right and you then get 15 people to do the same thing one more kid is going to camp here in, in the northeast or if you get seven and a half friends to do that that's the midwest southeast southwest because it's 750 dollars in those in those parts of the the country so when you care about the cause when it matters to you about changing somebody else's life because you know yours was changed for the better mm -hmm. like asking somebody for ten dollars or asking somebody for ten thousand dollars becomes a little bit easier because you know it will make the difference and you can communicate that with the people that you know and love absolutely 100% you you've said it so perfectly it was so wonderful to speak to you but I could honestly talk for the next like 10 hours about how impactful camp is it was so lovely to hear about, and I really hope that we get the opportunity to talk again because it was really really nice to chat with you guys um but just to kind of finish off obviously like we've already mentioned we've got our event on September 27th so um if you are like a listener if you are an AmeriCamp alumni applicant whatever it might be um you can head to our like link tree on our Instagram you can donate directly if you're not able to take part but if you are able to take part um let us know sign up let us know where you're running what your fundraising goal is we can't wait to hear from everyone and I'm really excited to sort of revisit this conversation um after the 27th and see how everything's gone and then kind of look forward to what we'll be doing next which is really exciting um but yeah i just wanted to thank you guys again so much for joining us today um and we're gonna wrap up now um and yeah we'll we'll speak soon i i hope that we get a lot of funds for scope thank you so much mm -hmm.